Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to an honestly very hard challenge. In the last episode, I'm sure we all felt the same heartbreak that Miss did when she unfortunately lost her second baby. We were never even able to meet the little one because the moment they entered the nest, they were taken away from us by a terribly lethal illness. That does mean that any baby she has from here on out with Icebreaker has the potential to meet the same fate. They must share an immunity gene in there somewhere. And that also means that Kingsley was even luckier than we first realized. While he is one of the greatest collectors in our tribe right now, just for food-based reasons, he was also able to escape the sickness. So because of that, I don't think that Mist is going to give up hope. She knows that there's still plenty of good fortune to be found in her family, and she knows that as long as she keeps her head high, she's going to be able to lead them on even through this trying time. So as we go ahead and skip the day, we'll see if maybe we can have her make her way back toward the nest, because she's going to have to prepare this for her next baby. She is convinced that they're going to be healthy and strong. And I think a pretty good indicator of that would be if she jumped on over here to couple up these bugs too. Mist is our one fighting force against Mulberry's misfortune. She's basically doing all of the work. Kingsley could, of course, but he's a little bit lazier than his mother would like to admit. I wonder if it might just be because he was so affected by Mulberry's misfortune at such a very young age. So it's kind of manifested in him as some form of arrogance. He knows how important he is to this tribe, so he thinks it's his right to be lazy. He's the only one, aside from his mother after all, who can come over to this oak tree and pick up those acorns. So he basically figures that everybody else has to protect him, and that includes their new little bear Yina friend too. Oh, and how fitting. It looks like the bear Yina is going right over to the acorns. Well, let's see if we can follow him. If we could set you up right on top of that bunny burrow again, that would probably be the best place for you. And there's our rogue male friends once more. Thankfully, we learned that Toxin is actually pretty good at keeping them away. I think partially because she's so strong. They just know better than to mess with her. So to be honest, she would actually make an excellent spy. Maybe that's what Kingsley is going to use her for. She could go out into rogue male territory and see if she can find any information from them. Learn about the resources they might have or perhaps if there are any more dangers lurking around these parts. The rogues get around quite a bit too, so if anybody would know the lay of the land, it would probably be them. As it turns out, Toxin is great at blending in. She strikes me as just a little spitfire, as fearless as she had been on day one. Her paws are probably always dirty too, completely filthy from digging up these roots, but she certainly doesn't mind. It's always a little bit of extra food to share with her friend Orion. I feel like these two probably see each other as more of a brother and a sister. I can't really see them seeing each other as potential mates. Though at the same time, because Orion has just grown his third gem, and now that there are no Bergenas for them to worry about anymore, the nursery is safe once more. Maybe he's wondering if he could attract a mate of his own. He is a very dashing guard after all with that grand peacock tail. It gives him a little bit more in attractiveness. So if we could find him some sort of stump to use, I wonder if that would be a good way for him to attract a potential mate. Back when the stumps were first added to the game, how many of you guys remember when the sound that our creatures made was the same one as the Dodomingos? It was almost as if our little creatures were making the Dodomingos when they sang on top of the stumps. So I feel like that's probably a good indication that the Dodomingos might use that as a way to attract potential mates too. So since Orion was apparently raised by Dodomingos, maybe this is a little bit of his bird side showing. We'll have him clean up the nursery with help from Mist, kind of like primping and preening this place as birds often do. Maybe he could even find some little treasures on his journey to bring back as if that will help him attract a mate even more. Given that his Dodomingo side is really showing right now, it makes me wonder if anybody is truly going to get him. Aside from the Dodomingos themselves, oh my gosh. Really, little one. I hope you're leading your Dodomingo brethren towards some sort of stump. That would be pretty excellent too. 
Now it looks like Toxin has found her first taker. This rogue male over here, who's actually rather new. I don't think we've even seen you around these parts before. He's inspecting the Baryena. Does that mean perhaps you watch the Baryena battle? Well, we'll see if she can get any more information out of you. And as for you, Icebreaker, you better make sure that you clear out your pathways around this tree. It is actually pretty difficult for us to get around right now, and we don't want to risk losing the baby Baryena in the grass either. So we'll have you stay on path clearing duty for the moment, until your mate is ready to have her next baby. Let's go ahead and skip the day again. We'll zoom out this time just in case. But we don't want the baby being underneath the shade of the tree here. Let's make sure that we can see everything so nothing surprises us. Oh. Oh, Mist, getting a little taste of your own medicine here. Mulberry's misfortune has actually surprised you? Now she's trapped in a nightmare too. Not enough that she can't move, thankfully. She still has one turn's worth of energy to use. Oh, and she's ready to have her baby too. That's a little bit worrying. I wonder if maybe it did get to her more than she was willing to admit. And now that the reality of it all is setting in, it's finally starting to take its toll. I suppose we could have her settle down on this nest instead then, just so she's a little bit further away from those bugs. Oh, but if only her son were here. Maybe he would be willing to eat the swarms if he knew how it was affecting his mother. I know that Mist is definitely going to live on in our lore. For sure, she's going to be like the opposing force to Mulberry. And as far as her powers go, she would be the one who devours the nightmares of the Sleeping Sickness. Just like the mythical creatures that we were talking about in the last episode. So she's like a little dream eater in a way. Pulling creatures out of those heavy dreams that Mulberry curses them with. Or maybe just protecting other creatures from Mulberry's curse in general. I would imagine that travelers who go through large patches of swampland like this would probably pray to her to keep them safe on their journeys. But I guess this is going to be a good way for her to truly understand the curse, because now she's going to be living it too. Well, Icebreaker, I'm sure you know what to do now. You're going to have to leave the baby Baryena in the care of Toxin. Not to mention, we're going to have to make sure that we pay you again, Mr. Peaceful Bear. Now he's a little bit further away from the nursery, which is kind of a concern. I wonder if there's a way that we could lure him back, or if he's just going to keep moving forward. We want him to be as close to the babies as possible. Well, Kingsley, for now, let's have you settle down on top of the bunny burrow so you can go ahead and pick up the acorns for us. I know that that's still your number one priority, and it is not changing anytime soon. Are we even going to be able to move Icebreaker around the Peaceful Bear? If we bring you up to this tile, yeah, the Peaceful Bear is actually going to be blocking you. He is actually standing here like a troll under a bridge or something. You cannot pass until you pay me. Well, if that's how it's going to be, poor little Mist is going to have to wait one extra day to see her mate. I just hope that she's going to be able to do this alone. And where did your little Dodomingo friend go? A little bit deeper into the grasses? Straight into the heart of poison berry territory, it seems. I guess there are a few normal berry bushes out here. These are probably the ones that we were picking from before. But the question is, what's out here that would be interesting to a Dodomingo? Let's have you scoot into the grasses right here. Ah, uh, there we go. Another one of those permanent nests. So that's good to know. It looks like the nursery even extends all the way down here. This might be a good one for you to use if you do find somebody to settle down with. Now, Toxin, I think there were a few more roots out here. Way off in the distance. Yeah, let's have you just cozy on up to the Baryena for now. We'll have you clear out the grasses right around him so you can get to him a bit more easily. This is probably quite familiar to you, too. She spends so much time around the rogue males, the riffraff of the world. Spending time traveling beside a rugged Baryena is probably like a breath of fresh air. Maybe he's even a little bit more civilized than those rogue males are. Well, let's go ahead and skip the day again. But this time, let's zoom in right on Mist. 
Let's cross our fingers that she's not going to have the same tragedy befall her. Another baby banana? And it looks like he's actually healthy? Oh my gosh! The blessings of the bananas are upon you. Ben active. Okay. Okay, Ben. Ben the banana. Kingsley the king banana. I say it every time, but we are getting seriously lucky with these names. They just always seem to fit so perfectly. He might have a no paw, but he still does have the nimble fingers, just like his mother. So that means he's going to be just as helpful as his brother is in a way. The only problem is he doesn't have those ram horns, so maybe he's not quite as strong. In fact, it looks like he might have the lean body. Yeah, not a single point in attack. Now, your father didn't have the lean body, right? No, he definitely has the normal body. Oh, how interesting. So does that mean that they both have the lean body in their inactive traits? Or that maybe one of them is hiding something even more special? See, I'm awfully curious to see what sort of snout is in their inactive traits, because something pretty big has to be in icebreakers. Unless he maybe had the sticky tongue too, hidden beneath that derp snout of his. But that would be some seriously big coincidence. Well, hopefully someday, little Ben or Kingsley will be able to show that to us. But for now, Mist, you must just be so, so pleased. I know you do still have the sleeping sickness. But all we need is for Icebreaker to make his way to your side, and you'll probably be feeling good as new again. Now Kingsley, maybe it's time that you actually snuck on over here to grab some of these bugs too. Get your first taste of the bugs as well. That way you can say with sure conviction that you prefer the acorns any day. Where gobbling up all of those fly swarms might give Mist a bit of energy. I wonder if maybe they only make him feel a bit more lethargic. Again, because he was affected at such a young age. Well, Icebreaker, go ahead and pick up that grass and then scoot right next to your mate. We'll have you settle down in the other nest for now. As Mist clears out a little bit of extra space for her baby too. You two must just be over the moon. This is why she knows better than to give up hope. No matter what sort of tragedy she faces, she'll never let it destroy her because she knows that things will always change for the better. Even Mulberry's misfortune is just a fleeting thing. While it might seem crippling at the time, eventually she'll find a way to chase it away for good. Now, Orion, why don't you go ahead and pick up the grasses right here so we don't lose track of this berry bush? I really hope that you're going to find a mate who's going to be able to pick that for you. Unfortunately, with your double no paws, that's going to be quite an issue. No stumps out here, though? That's a little bit disappointing. Not a single one for you to use. And I definitely don't want you to get too far away. We can't risk you getting separated from the rest of the tribe. Who knows what sort of dangers are waiting in that uncharted territory. You might be strong, but it's not as though you have a Baryena on your side. I'm guessing the baby Baryena must have gone off this way somewhere. Let's have you sniff around again. Yeah, there we go. It looks like the Baryena has already grown up, and it looks like they're investigating the water, too. Oh, look at this toxin. You've even found yourself a permanent nest that you could potentially use. Well, if the Baryena doesn't get too far away, I wonder if maybe you found eyes for him. He is, after all, so much more civilized than those rogue males. Honestly, I can see those two working together very, very well. Well, let's go ahead and skip the day again, and once again, we will zoom out to watch all sides of this tribe. Who knows where danger is going to strike next? I know for sure that the Defender Bears should be down here somewhere, probably over on the other side of the stream, so it shouldn't be anything that you have to worry about. But there's another one of our rogue male friends. We might want to consider breeding Mist again, just so we don't have to worry about her. Toxin might be fine on her own, but we know from experience that Mist is not. Yeah, that might be the wrong move, buddy. Is he coming up here, like, begging for scraps? Mr. Rogmail, you should know better than to beg to the king himself. He is just gonna send you packing. We'll have you go ahead and grab that one last little acorn for us. 
and then missed, oh my gosh, feeling better than ever. You could actually jump straight over here to gobble up both swarms of bugs. She'll splash around in the mud, encouraging little Banana Ben to maybe take a step closer. We'll bring Icebreaker over to this side and then scoot him straight to this nest so he can spend some time playing around with his mother too. Now Icebreaker, why don't we have you clear out the grasses over here so you can connect this area with Orion's a bit more easily. I guess this truly is his home. If the Dodomingos have claimed it too, you know it has to be a good spot for a bird. If only he could use this high cliff to sing off of too. That would be pretty excellent right about now. But instead, we're going to have to have you clear a pathway off toward the back of the grasslands. And we'll see if you can find anything a little bit more promising out this way. Use that big nose of yours to sniff into the grass. Listen around for potential dangers. Nothing yet, just a moles in the darkness. Maybe if you catch a few moles, that'll be convincing enough in lieu of singing like a Donomingo anyways. Now, can we perhaps try again to track down your Baryena friend, Toxin? Oh, he's all the way down here. And look at this. This rogue male is trying to get your attention now. Oh, he's probably so sad and frightened. In fact, he is probably trying to gain a little bit of your sympathy this way. He just can't fathom why that mean old king would send him packing, when all he wanted were just a few little table scraps. Well, Toxin knows that rogue males can be quite the convincing liars. She has spent enough time with far too many of them, so she's not about to offer you up any of her roots either. But I think we should be ready to skip the day again. So, let's zoom in on Miss this time. I want to make sure that she's not going to get infected once more. Yeah, I was a little bit worried about that. We're going to have to figure out a bit of a better way to handle this. When the mud is around, it makes a great way for us to gather food, of course. So that's why I don't want them to leave. But it's clear that sitting right on top of these things is just asking for trouble. So we'll scoot her a little bit deeper into the grasses next time. And for now, let's have Icebreaker breed with her again. That way, if any other rogue males spawn, we'll definitely be in the clear. Let's have Icebreaker jump over here too. That way, he should be able to check up on the Peaceful Bear's status on the next turn. Something tells me he's probably looking for a little bit more nest material again. And we only have one more day's worth of payment. Oh jeez, Orion. Quick, grab every last piece of cross that you can reach. Really, not a single one work that time? Oh, that is so disappointing. Even all of the experience the Dodomingos gave you isn't enough this time. We can't lose this peaceful bear, though. There is no doubt in my mind that if this peaceful bear hadn't been near our tribe, if we hadn't been able to pay him for that matter, we would have had some serious trouble with the Baryinas. They could have even destroyed our tribe in the second episode, because the only thing keeping them away was its growls. And likewise, we wouldn't have met our little friendly Baryina either. Oh, and another rogue male. Gosh, you are attracting the worst kind of visitors. You know, we probably don't want to bring her down to the shore, do we? That is very, very risky. Oh no, and that's exactly where you're going? Straight into the water, really? How on earth are we going to chase you now? There is no way that we can risk leaving her by the ocean, because if she picks up a leech, nobody is going to be able to save her. Licking the wounds of a spiky-bodied creature is just inviting death our way. But since nobody else seems to have any turns, aside from little Ben the Banana, of course, I wonder if maybe we could have you cross the stream? We have a one child that you could jump into, assuming the rogue male isn't there right now and assuming that that current isn't going to be too tough for you to cross. Oh, that is so risky. I mean, should we have her go all the way back up to wrap around to the Baryena again? And by the time we get back down there, the Baryena might have actually passed away. Oh, Toxin, I hate to think that you may have lost your true love. You know what? She has never shown fear before. She's going to decide anything for love, anything for that Baryena. She would be willing to risk it all for him too. So let's have you jump into the water. 
with all the fish swimming around your spiky body, then right back up to dry salt land. Excellent. No death in our future yet. And that means you're almost close enough to finally start your family with the bear unit too. But we're going to have to move her away from the ocean right on the next turn. As soon as the morning comes. Granted, you're kind of in the way, sir. I don't see a leech down here in this algae. But we definitely need you to move. I am not going to risk sitting her right down next to the ocean. Who knows if there's a leech in there because she is short-sighted. So as we have Kingsley, go ahead and grab one extra acorn. Then we'll scoot you deeper into the grass. Can you actually reach the Baryuna now? Oh, excellent. And it looks like he even caught you a meal too. That's what he was coming all the way out here for. He wanted to find you a nice romantic dinner, because it's clear that he feels the same way. I guess it's going to take one extra turn for us to truly have our bear unit baby, so hopefully he doesn't move too far away. Now how adorable is this? It looks like the peaceful bear is actually checking up on Mist now. Well, show him that you're okay. You might be a little bit sleepy, but you definitely still have some spunk left in you. That's good that he's gotten closer because that's exactly where I want him to be, right next to these nests over here. So, icebreaker, let's use those last three pieces of nesting material and hope that that's going to be enough to keep all of your babies safe. Why don't you go ahead and knock down some more of these acorns too? I feel like Kingsley would probably appreciate it. Again, he feels entitled to just lays around all day, so you can bet that he's not wasting any energy on tree trunks. There has to be some deeper connection between the peaceful bear and Mist, too. One of you suggested that maybe Mist could also be, like, the protector of orphan babies in a way. Since we do often find so many children wandering around in the grass out here, maybe she would be their guiding force. The one gently ushering them towards survival, toward one of our tribes to take them in. I like the idea that she's out there just keeping everybody safe. And that's kind of what the peaceful bears do too. So maybe having a peaceful bear around is also a sign of her good fortune, like a totem of good luck in our lore. I've gotta admit, it is kind of funny, kind of ironic really, that Orion still hasn't found a mate out here. And yet, his little sister Toxin has already found her one true love. She's going to be starting her family far before him. If he knew, he would be feeling very, very frustrated. I'll go ahead and pick up a little bit more grass. Sniff around. Still nothing worthwhile out here. But eventually, you have to run into a new face, right? Let's have Icebreaker. I guess you might as well scoot your way down here to the baby. Overprotective icebreaker, but can you really blame him? Above all else, he knows that every moment with his babies is to be cherished. He knows that just as easily it can be stripped away from him. So let's go ahead and skip the day again. We'll watch and see where the friendly Baryuna goes this time, so we can hopefully follow him a bit more easily. Ooh, as the rains start to respawning those big mud puddles already, and you thought you just got rid of them. It looks like we're going to have to help out your mate in a moment. Alright, I just saw another rogue male back there. Interesting how the Baryuna actually left the food for you too. Usually they tend to grab it instead. Well, let's see if we can at least breed you this time. Hopefully it'll work. There we go. Toxin only has a foreign fertility and I know the Baryunas typically have a pretty low chance. So this might not help us fertility wise for our babies but it will give us some pretty interesting genes. The strength is always a good thing for us to have on our side. Four more days until Mist can have her next baby too, so let's have you jump on down here and pick up these bugs for us. You can grab these berries too, but I wonder if maybe we should bring the baby to go meet his big brother Kingsley. I don't think those two have even interacted yet. And Kingsley's gonna have to figure out sooner or later that he has some competition. He's still the first in line to inherit the throne, of course, as the eldest son. But Ben strikes me as somebody who's a little bit more like his mother. And that's probably only going to infuriate Kingsley. Like, who does this baby think he is? Does he think that he's better than Kingsley? 
I wonder if maybe he would try to put him to work somehow, like right off the bat. Not only to distract him, but also to make his kingdom more profitable. Now one last time, Orion. Let's have you jump down to the grasses. Peer around right at the very edge of the savannah. I think your hopes and dreams of finding any sort of stump might be dashed. I know they can definitely spawn out here, but there is so much grass for us to cover. I guess they have all popped up in different locations. So, which way do you think Orion should search next? We could have him head down to the grasslands over here. And since there are so many trees in the area, maybe it would be a little bit more likely that we would find one. A tree that finally fell down after years and years of providing creatures with acorns. Or we could head off toward the right instead, which is more uncharted territory, but it would actually bring him closer to his old home. And if this is where the Dodomingos had decided to settle down before, maybe that means that there is actually more treasures for him to find out here. More that would interest the Dodomingos, at least. So in the next episode, I sure hope that Orion is going to be able to find a mate, because who knows how much longer this piece is going to last. We've been very, very lucky these past few days, and I think little Ben the Banana shows that best. But sooner or later, the Berginas are going to come back for their revenge, too. And we need to make sure that our tribe will be strong enough to take them on. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!